So in the last episode I showed you how you can create some quick and easy sculpted stylized hair in Blender. Now today I want to show you how we can go ahead and add some materials and textures to our guy right here and also take a look at some of the new painting functionality in Blender's sculpt mode. But as always my name is Keelan and let's get into it. Hey, welcome back everybody, here we are, we're back in Blender and I hope you're enjoying this tutorial series so far. Apologies for the delay with this episode, got a lot of projects going on right now and it was just a little bit hard to find the time to record. But going forward, I think Tuesdays are going to be known as Tutorial Tuesdays, where I create some content catered to beginners that's a bit slower and we take our time a little bit more in Blender. But as always, I recommend going ahead and jumping back into the previous episode if you haven't done the series yet, just so you're not confused as to what's going on right now. Initially, let's go ahead and take a look at how we can do some painting with some Blender's new cool painting functionality in sculpting mode. So to start then, let's go ahead and select our character once again, and we're gonna jump back into sculpt mode. And now scrolling down here, let's go ahead and select this nice new paint functionality. And in this case, I think it's probably worth switching my matte cap back to something gray like this so we can see what we're doing a bit better. But essentially now in this paint mode, we've got a couple of options up here. We've got this nice color palette. We've got a radius as before and our strength of our brush. But in this case, I just want to select a nice pinky skin cartoony color, maybe something like that. We can go ahead and press forward slash to isolate our head part here, turn on x-axis mirroring. I'm going to turn my strength right up so it's nice and flat, and we can start painting on our character. Hmm. In this case, I think that's far too pinky, so I'm going to make this a little bit more yellowy and orange perhaps. Something like that, that looks a little bit better. And I'm just going to literally paint this whole character here till he's nice and smothered in this colour. Something like that I think looks pretty good to me. And then let, then bring in the general scale of my brush down here. I'm going to zoom in, switch into a more pinky color. And I'm going to start producing the strength of my brush. And just start adding in a little bit of a color distinction on my nose. Because that's just how I like my characters. I like to give them a nice rosy nose and a nice rosy cheek effect. And where you have these harsher lines, you can go ahead and hold shift to click, and that's gonna let you blend those colors nicely between the skin and the rosiness. Don't worry if you get it on the inside here, we're not gonna see that anyway. But something like that I think will do for now. And maybe a little bit on the ears too, where we have those color distinctions. But don't worry about being too perfect with this. In the end of the day, you know, this is just a nice basic character, a nice practice sculpt, so we can get familiar with these tools. Now let's do forward slash to bring everything back. And just like that, we have a nice character with rosy cheeks and nice rosy noses. Noses? I mean ears. <laughs> Whoops. So now if we wanted to add some materials to the hair and the brows and the eyes, we'd need to jump in to our viewport shade in view so that we can start adding in some materials here but you'll notice that we lose the skin so what's going on here well if i jump back into object mode for the moment and select our head you can see inside object data properties when we started painting we automatically generated this new color attribute variable i'm going to rename this by double clicking and just call it base but essentially what we need to do is to plug this new variable into the material for our head so it shows in our material and rendered views. So for that, let's go ahead and bring our cursor up to the corner here. And when you get this sort of target icon, you can click and drag left to create a new tab. Now in this new tab, we can go into this drop down and select any screen we want. In this case, I just want a shader editor. And you can see by default, We've got this basic material here on our um, head model. And if you if yours looks like this, go ahead and just create new. And what we want to do is inside our node editor, we're not going to do anything fancy here, so don't be intimidated. All we're going to do is press Shift A, add in a new node, and we're going to search for the color attribute node. Chuck this in by here, and in the drop down here where you select this option, 
click on our base which we are getting from this little color output section here plug the color into the base and boom just like that now we see the color attribute appearing as it should so now we can click and drag this right to close it out and carry on adding some additional materials to our character so initially let's start by adding some color to the hair so i'm going to select my hair object here into our material properties let's create a new material call this hair and i'm just going to give it a base color that's a little bit of the orangey red bring it down so it becomes a bit more of a brown color and we can duplicate this to the brows by selecting the brows shift select in the hair Control L to link transfer. I'm going to link the materials just like that. Now for the eyes, let's initially right click and set the shading to smooth. So it's smooth over. I'm going to create a new material called this one eyeball because this is just going to be the white of the eyes. But I like to bring my roughness down to something like 0 0.25 so it's a little bit more reflective. And what you can do as you're doing this inside the material preview. We can go ahead and switch our HDRI if we want to. And generally, I kind of like this one because I think it highlights the shadows nicely. And I think what we want to do then is we want two materials on the eyes, one for the eyeball, one for the pupil. And let's go ahead and just add another material Call this pupil. I'm going to make this a black color and also bring in my roughness to 0.25 to match with the eyeball. But of course, in order then to add materials to individual sections on a shape you need to tab into edit mode in this case i want to make sure i press three uh, press three or select appear to select faces i'm going to click and drag to select all these and to select this entire loop we can hold alt and shift select this head here and that's going to select the whole loop for us and then click on pupil click assign and just like that we have a nice looking character and there's only one more thing i want to do to this in this case, I want to select my head object and what I like to do for my sort of skin, you don't have to do this, but it's just something I like to do. I like to introduce a little bit of subsurface scattering and what that essentially is, it's when light, you know, so you know when light enters your skin and you get that sort of reddish tone to it. We can simulate that by making the subsurface color a nice red color and then slowly bringing up our, whoop, slowly bringing up our subsurface scattering variable i'm holding shift here to make this nice and gradual but if i make this whoa if i make this really big so it's very obvious what's going on we're starting to get this red color introduced in a way that sort of simulates that skin effect but obviously you want to be quite subtle with this but i like it because it adds a little bit more rosiness around the ears and around the nose to give us a nice, more fleshy appearance. But I think that's gonna just about do for today's video, guys. But if you did enjoy, don't forget to leave a cheeky like because it goes a long way to support me and this channel. And if you'd be interested in the next episode where we're gonna be jumping into lighting and all that fun stuff, hit that subscribe button, notification bell to be notified when it drops. Other than that, source files, as always, will be over on the Patreon for those that are interested. And as always, I hope you enjoy the rest of your day and I'll catch you in the next one.